advances in, in medicine or surgery um, over the next, say, say 50 years, uh, are always difficult to predict. You, never, you, know, you can never really predict a disruptive technology that will come your way. And by disruptive technology, I, I would say that in 1890 there were horse-drawn buses in London, and by 1895 there were none. It was all in internal combustion engine, that kind of disruption. But then we have a hundred years of internal combustion engine, which is basically the same thing in a, a bus or a Formula One car. And then suddenly you have an electric car, which is actually quite different. So, so those are disruptive changes. And I don't know what's coming next, but what we can say is that there will be changes in technology which will have an enormous impact. And I think some categorization of those is possible. So there's going to be big advances in material science, big advances in... Um, personalizing medicine. So we'll understand more about the relationship between your genotype and uh, what we should do for you, either special personal drugs or modifying your genes. Or we'll be using more sophisticated imaging where I can take, a, like this, I can take a, a print, a 3D reconstruction of your own body part and then design a nanotechnology produced um, thing that I can use to rehearse an operation and then actually do it. So this could, I can practice in vitro. I mean, imagine, this I can do now, so imagine what it's going to be like in 10, 15 years' time. It'll be your bit that I'm making and it'll be manufactured somewhere just for you. We've already started that. Um, we'll be, um, mechanical devices will take over. We'll be able to perhaps do away with transplantation by giving you some form of mechanical heart. That will, well, this is a Berlin heart, but there are many variations of them that we can implant and, and perhaps avoid you having a transplant. Um, they're technology dependent. The materials are technology dependent. I think there are going to be big advances in the use of data. Um, we already see big data and analysis, whatever that means, but um, the ability to take uh, data from all sources and have the machine learn and give you advice as to what's the right thing to do is going to make a big difference. So we'll, we'll save a lot of time in research and development because every patient can be part of a piece of research or science in a way that never been before. And I would hope that surgery will disappear. I mean, the idea of, a for me, a successful surgical specialty is one which does itself out of existence by the next technological development. And cardiac surgery is on the way, you know, it's developing lots of tools that can be delivered and dealt with through a peripheral vein instead of having to open your chest up. So those things are likely to occur. Yes, yeah, so I think medicine will also, medicine change because the way it's organized. And we've already seen with this government that they're trying to move everything back towards primary care and do many more things in the community. So I fully envisage that um, following patients up to understand what the consequences of what we do to them occur will be by you having instruments on your body that will be stitched into you, rather like you wear your Nike exercise band now. Um, and you have your little thing on your bike to tell you how fast you're going. Your iPhone tells you how quickly you run up and down stairs. Imagine that if it's embedded within you and it communicates with my computer here. So I've got your quality of life in real time. And I can see that for the pool of patients looking at my quality of life. And I'll have a machine which is teaching, which is learning itself from all of these data to tell me what I should be doing next. I think that's not far away. Uh, why not? Um, we and Birmingham Children's and Boston Children's, Toronto, um, Philadelphia, we're working with NASA and McLaren Electronics and other people to look at the waveforms that happen on an intensive care screen to try and predict what's going to happen with that baby later by collecting all the data up, looking and see when things go wrong and see if we could look back at those data and see whether there were any clues on it. Just like the Formula One teams do, looking at the engine dynamics as the car is going around the track. When they have an engine failure, they can go back and see when the components started to fail. Those things, you learning from other specialties, other industries and bringing those skills together, changing medicine more quickly. And so technology, society, finance are all going to overlay in the way the service is delivered.